Welcome to the Friday Night Frenzy Regional Championship Edition alongside Ruben. I'm Rob. We begin tonight's show with a battle of unbeatens. Mike Johnson, his Pioneer Panthers, taking the trip to Lafayette to face Central Catholic. Rob, both teams have pretty much cruised to 12 0 records, but unfortunately, one team's season would come to an end tonight. That is unfortunate. Both these teams pretty good. The Knights have beaten the Panthers the last six times they've played. Pioneer last beat CC in 2005. Scoreless game the second quarter. It's the Panthers that strike first. Jack Kaiser rumbles in for the touchdown. 7-0 Pioneer. CC looking to respond deep in their territory. Avery Dinhart all day to throw. Aims for Jordan Turpin, but no dice. Knights have to settle for a field goal attempt. He's pretty good. Sam Alazzo comes in and does the job for the Knights. But Pioneer takes a surprising 7-3 lead at the half. Time for CC coach Kevin O'Shea and the Knights to regroup. Jackson Anthrop kept in check in the first. Not so much in the second. A jack show breaks a couple of arm tackles, gets in for the score. CC takes a 10-7 lead. Panthers clawing back, though. Pioneer QB Sam Kaiser dupes our fab photog Ruben and hooks up with Jacob Morris for the touchdown. Pioneer goes on, on top, 14-7. But the Knights began to show their prowess. Make that 14-10. CC now 17-14. A lot of numbers coming your way. Dinhart launches deep, finds Luke Fusick and strive for 54-yard TD. Late fourth, Pioneer trying to make a comeback. Kaiser throws across the field. Jackson Anthrop can smell the pick skin from a mile away. CC's jack of all trades, picks it off, brings it back for the touchdown. Central Catholic wins 31-14. Coach Kevin O'Shea will join us later in the coach's court. West Lafayette seeking a second semi-state appearance in the last three years, but they would have to go through Belmont after both teams turned the ball over on their first possession. It's RDP that strikes first. Mikey Kidwell hooks up with a loop to Lucan for the 22-yard score. Red Devils up 7-0, still in the first, tied at 7. Travis Roll on the give, and he bulldozes in for 6. Roll carried the ball 47 times for more than 300 yards. In the second, deadlocked at 14. Grant Gutierrez finds Matt Sh Mason Shineberry for the 10-yard touchdown. The Braves take a 21-14 lead. But with less than half a minute to go in the half, Kidwell connects with Nye Carlisle for the score. Westside misses the PAT. The Braves take a 21-20 lead at the break. Same score in the fourth, but on the first play, Kidwell finds Sam Oates and the Red Devils go up 28-21. Last chance for the Braves, but Brandon Adams going to come up with the big time sack for RDP. And the Red Devils are moving on 28-21 the final. They'll play Mishawaka Marion in the 3A North semi-state. It's been our goal to win sectionals, win regionals, and then go on to semi-state and make it to Lucas Oil. That's been our one goal the entire season, and uh, we're three quarters of the way there. This is a great moment right now. You know, this gives us a chance to actually make a run. You know, for, for the playoffs. This this is an amazing moment. You know, going forward, this gives us a huge boost of momentum. It's just great. I mean, it's it's tough going on a two and a half hour road trip, come over and play a game. These guys are fired up the whole way. Um, you know, good good motors the whole game, uh, and we were able to finish it off. Moving on. Welcome back to the Frenzy. Joining us tonight, Central Catholic head coach Kevin O'Shea. Uh, a lot of times you probably maybe not so drained in the regular season because you win you win big. This one, not not the case. Down at halftime, what, what's going through your mind? Um, really, it, it wasn't anything that we didn't expect. I mean, you know, Mike Johnson and, and his kids are outstanding. They were an outstanding team. Mike's a great coach. And they schemed us pretty good. Um, we didn't get an opportunity to make a couple of plays in the first half. And we made those same plays in the second half. And that was kind of opened things up for us. What, uh, what was said at half to kind of get the guys going? Really nothing much. <laughs> I mean, it, it was more defensive adjustments. And, uh, you know, offensively, my only comment to the offense was, you know, let's keep doing what we're doing. We just got to make a play. Um, defensively, I thought uh, my brother, our defensive coordinator, did a great job of rallying our kids. We made a couple of coverage adjustments and we made a couple of adjustments up front. And I really thought that kind of stymied them in the second half. It allowed us to get the football and move the football a little bit. Now, I wasn't there, but uh, we were kind of talking before we came on here and you were just talking about it seemed like you guys didn't have the ball. I mean, you, you, you didn't convert right. on those couple catches you won in the first half, but what did they do to, did they just run the ball effectively on you guys? They, they did a great job. I think they threw more this game and what they probably did all year combined. Okay. Um, they, they run a lot of play action and they use deception and they were able to uh, dink and dime us a little bit for uh, some games for, for first downs. And uh, you know, they were getting four and five yards on first down. And, and when you're a wing T team, that's what you want. 
when you're trying to defend them, that is not what yeah. we want. And so uh, by the time we started getting the ball the second half, we settled down. And, uh, Jackson pretty much quiet in the first half. Second half, just MVP performance right there. Well, they did a great job of keying him. I mean, you know, if you're going in to play us, you're going to find where number 23 is and try to shut him down. Uh, they forced us to throw the football, and uh, we've got some really, really good receivers with Luke Fusick and Ben Metzinger and Jordan Turpin and uh, uh, Ben Tharp. And those kids did a great job the second half making catch and runs. And, you know, we were able to open things up a little bit better. I know you don't know much about Northfield. We were talking about that again also before the break. But what, what are you guys going to have to do? What do you go back to the drawing board to, to try to improve your team for next week in a, in a state championship run? One, I think it's going when, when you, ever you're playing deep into the tournament, one of the things you have to do is make sure that you keep your heads screwed on straight, that uh, you know what you need to be able to do. And we know offensively and defensively what we like to do. We just have to see what Northfield does. Big win tonight. You're still alive. Like you said, it's always a good sign if there's basketball on the frenzy and you're coming in on the coach's corner <laughs> yes, for football. Uh, thanks again, and best of luck next week against Northfield. Thanks, guys. Yep. Make sure to check out WLFI.com and click on the Sports tab to get highlights from tonight's games. Have a great night. We'll see you next week.